Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Technical Things Series Emulation Night School, where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators for some of the most popular consoles so you can enjoy gaming on your PC if you're not an original hardware collector like me. And today we're doing Dreamcast on Flycast, and I've either already shown you a Redream emulation tutorial, or I will be soon, so if you want to go down below and leave that comment why Flycast and not Redream, trust me, you're getting both. But by the end of this, you'll be able to play Dreamcast games on Flycast and have a ton of fun. And remember, if you do need personalized help, I do have a Patreon tier over on my Patreon where you can get direct access to me if you have any questions. But honestly, if you watch this tutorial, you should be totally fine. And because Dreamcast is one of the best consoles ever made and my favorite console Sega was ever involved in, this is going to be an extra fun one. If you haven't emulated Dreamcast yet, you will be by the end of this video because there's so much fun to be had on the console and Flycast does an amazing job of emulating it. Now to get this, I will leave a link in the description below, but you're going to walk over to Flycast GitHub page. This is where all of the different builds are going to be hosted. And do be aware that there's a lot of different versions of Flycast for different platforms, but all of my tutorials are going to be Windows based, but for the most part, the information will be portable across different versions. You'll see here there's a menu called Install, and you'll see all of the different distros for this, so Linux, things like Mac OS, even Xbox One and Series X. But obviously, we're just going to go down to Binaries and grab the Windows binary for this actual installation. It is quite easy, but the next screen can seem a little bit daunting. You're going to go to the builds page. You're going to get this recent builds on master. Dev is going to be the dev branch and you can use that, but for this, I'm going to have you guys use master. You'll see all of these different versions of the build. Just go ahead and pick the one at the top. When you go to this page, you'll see here that was July 29th of 2024. And just go ahead and download the file to come down as a zip. Wherever you want to install Flycast is totally fine. Wherever the folder lives is where Flycast does exist. So go ahead and unzip that Flycast zip we have here. You guys won't have the one because obviously I've done this on my system before. And within that folder, when you unzip it, you're going to have the Flycast executable. The first thing I want you to do is run that because it's going to create a couple folders that we're going to want to use later on. Now you'll see here you're going to have a Dreamcast BIOS option in the main screen. I want you to double click on that and you're going to see Flycast flycast has stopped no bios file found in the directory that flycast lives and you'll see there a data folder this is what you should be seeing once you add the bios the dreamcast splash screen that will bring you into the actual dreamcast os menu without this file this emulator is not going to run whatsoever so once you run flycast once you're going to end up with a data folder within the flycast folder you can ignore box art for now i just want you to go ahead and put the dreamcast bios you can go region free if you want right here it needs to be dc underscore boot dot bin which is different than something like redream where it just uses boot dot bin so be aware of the file name if you have a good bios file in the right folder data once you double click that dreamcast logo again you are going to see the splash screen this means the bios is installed correctly in the appropriate location and now you'll be able to launch whatever dreamcast games you want to launch again you might want to go region free on that bios i can't tell you where to find them you'll have to be creative on that with yourself. So you'll see here within the folder, we now have a bunch of different options under box art. You're going to see that we have achievements. We also have some shader caches and some VMUs. We're going to put games in the exact same data folder as we put the BIOS. You'll see here I put in Sega Rally 2 and I am using the GDI versions of this game. Don't grab the CDIs. They can be compressed. They can be missing assets. Those are for burning this to original Dreamcast. You want to use the GDI here. That is my recommendation. It's going to give you the full fat Dreamcast experience as far as the content of the disc is concerned. So to get these games ingested and if we go up to settings in general you're going to see an add and rescan content option. If you go ahead and click add it'll go to the parent directory in my instances and downloads but go to wherever you put the folder and do remember that again this is lowercase sensitive. Flycast is going to be lowercase so it'll show up underneath all of the folders that have uppercase. Go ahead and navigate to that data folder, hit OK, and then hit Rescan Content. If you've done this correctly, you will now see all of the games in that folder right there. And if you were to double click on Sega Rally 2, it would start playing. Now we still need to go over controls and a lot of other things, but this is how you add games to Flycast. It's going to be very important. And you're not going to add every single game all at once unless you download a full set, and that is quite big. So if you want to add additional games, just go ahead and drag a new folder into that data folder. And you'll see here, if we go back to settings, you'll 
get the option to rescan that directory again. And some reason settings is a touchy button. You may have to click it twice. Click rescan content. And now the first disk for D2 is going to be available to you as well. And that is how all of this works. But on the control front, depending on what controls you use, everything should automatically bind. I use an Xbox Series X controller. Flycast is going to be able to see that and you can use it right off the top. Under settings, you're going to have options for rumble as well as thumbstick dead zones. You do want to play around with these a little bit because some games are going to want more or less dead zone to feel close to a real Dreamcast controller. I can't give you the number for any particular game. It's kind of something just to play around with. And under port A, you can adjust all of the different options. You can add a light gun and I will go more in depth into a part two of this if you guys want to see it. This is just to get you up and running. But with all of those Xbox Series X controls mapped, you'll be in game and everything will be on the button you expect it to, the triggers you expect it to, and the analog stick you expect it to. Now, if you don't have an X input controller, I highly recommend getting one for pretty much any sort of emulation on a Windows machine. It is going to make your life 100% easier. You can grab a cheap Xbox One X controller, plug it in via USB, and you're good to go. You'll see here you have options in general. You can adjust the region of the machine. You can also adjust the TV cable, between composite RGB component and VGA. I just always leave mine at VGA because some games will launch in that 31 kilohertz mode. And of course you can add your games as well. Fetch box art will be selected by default, so you'll get all of those things in there. As far as the image is concerned, you can see here, you can set Naomi games as free play, as well as actually having to coin up, and you can also enable retro achievements. Now, as far as Naomi is concerned, I'm gonna be doing a completely separate tutorial on that, because while it is a similar process, there's a lot more things to know under the hood to get Naomi and Naomi 2 games running on Flycast, so look for that in the next couple weeks or so, but I usually spread these things out so I don't do two Sega consoles in a row but Naomi is one of the big features of Flycast, so we will get to it. As far as under the video option is concerned, you have graphics API options. By default, it's DirectX 11, and that works great, but you might want to pop over to Vulkan to see how that does as well. And on the transparency sorting, you can go per triangle, per strip, or per pixel, depending on the abilities of your PC. Per pixel is going to be slower but more accurate. You need to really decide what you want to do as far as the specs are concerned. But honestly, if you have a decent system, you should be okay doing that. And as far as the internal rendering resolution options are concerned, start at 3x. You should be getting full speed there if you have a relatively modern system. And then you can up it from there. I use an i9 processor with a 4080 GPU, so I do have a lot of additional horsepower. You'll see here V-Sync is on, and you also have the option to do widescreen in certain games if it supports it. So you'll want to look that up and see whether or not you can do widescreen on a game. And you even have a rotate mode for Tate games if you so choose. The great thing about Flycast is there are unlimited options to do whatever you would like with it. But for the most part, 99% of it is going to be set up exactly the way I would recommend when you open the app. So only change the options that I tell you to change unless you want to play around and do be paying attention when you toggle settings, I do recommend maybe taking a photo or a screenshot so you can pop them back to default if you so choose. Under the audio tab, ignore everything. Everything is totally fine unless you want to enable VMU sounds. Not many people do that. On the networking side of things, you can network stuff like Naomi's together. It is very intensive, but I will really show you that in the future. But this, again, is one of those situations where you probably don't really need to deal with it too much. Under advanced, there are some interesting options. I recommend leaving it on the dynamic recompiler as far as the code is concerned. And now here you can overclock the CPU on the Dreamcast. I don't really get many great results out of it in games that don't run at 60 frames per second. You might pick a frame or two up, but you might end up with a lot of bugs and glitches as well. By default, it is 200 megahertz. I recommend just leaving it there. Now in this other options menu, there are a couple important things. High level emulation BIOS, you can just leave unchecked. You definitely want to make sure multi-threaded emulation is checked so your CPU and GPU emulation can go on different CPU threads. But you'll see here, there is a mode to add 32 megabytes of RAM to the Dreamcast. This is usually something you don't want to do, but if you wanted to play Castlevania Resurrection, the unreleased prototype Castlevania game, this one level here with the three-headed snake in the tunnel will not run unless you have 32 megabytes of RAM 
because it was meant for a dev kit. So if you do have some sort of prototype that requires 32 megabytes of RAM, you would check that box there and then come back out and uncheck it when you want to go back to retail games. And that is the fun of something like Flycast. You do have the ability to add extra RAM to play some of those titles that would only work on development kits because for the most part, they're always going to have 32 megabytes of RAM versus 16 megabytes of RAM. But honestly, that's about it when it comes to Dreamcast emulation on Flycast. You got to get that BIOS in the right folder. You have to add your games. You have to plug in the X input controller. And then from there, it should automatically map. You can change the internal rendering resolution to whatever you want. But 99% of the settings are going to be exactly what you need to emulate Dreamcast. So luckily, Flycast is one of the easier ones out there as far as Dreamcast emulation is concerned. And I will do Naomi emulation very shortly so you can play some arcade games as well. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you need help, I got that Patreon link. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.